Hello, hello, hello. Hiya, hiya. Um, hi, I'm Casey Durang of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds after starting the ketogenic protocol and how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. Someone can let me know that you can see and hear me. That would be great. I never know. And hello to folks who are already here. Betty Lukabaugh. Good morning from Troy, Ohio, in Deb Erval. Greetings from Northern Montana. Bet you're chilly. Paula Brown, good morning from Missouri. Doxengal, good morning from Delaware. 40 degrees here. Heather Silva, hey. Colleen Spruill, hey, hey, hey. Annie Lewis, hey, Annie, it's been a while, girl. Okay, let's jump in. Today's topic is, as the, the uh, thumbnail reads, keto. It's not smoke and mirrors. And why would I be talking about that? Well, let me, for the uninitiated, let me share with you the ketogenic protocol as I learned it and as I have practiced it now for nearly 10 years. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs is just more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. It's fatty sources of protein, and then optionally, non-starchy vegetables in limited amounts and full-fat dairy in limited amounts. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop eating when you've had enough. That's it. So that's it. <laughs> and what do I mean when I say it's not smoke and mirrors? There's not a trick to it. Although some people, and maybe you guys can share and, and comment, how have you heard the ketogenic protocol described or referenced or labeled in your world, in your life, either friends, family, doctor, yourself? <laughs> um, now, marketing, yes, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. The word keto is a gimmick in marketing because if there is a product that says a keto or keto friendly or keto approved on the label, it's almost certainly not low carb. Uh, I actually was scanning, a thing popped up and said, you might be interested in purchasing these keto friendly chocolate chips. What? No, they're not keto friendly, at least not my keto, <laughs> not my keto friendly, nine grams of carbohydrate for a tablespoon. And who eats a tablespoon of chocolate chips? I mean, it's like, you know, eat the bag. So anyway, I've heard it referenced as a gimmick, a fad, a widow maker. That's not very nice. Um, um, dangerous. And just another version of eating less food. Well, yeah, that is. It is another version of eating less food because if you are eating very low carb and oh, let me explain why that works. W what happens? What do you mean you eat less food? When we are following the standard American diet and a bunch of our calories are coming from carbohydrates, so carbs at a certain level, a very low level, if we're consuming carbohydrates, our digestive system and the miracle of our bodies get through. And then the liver, the last little stage, pumps out from those carbs, glucose, which is sugar. And then the system is burning on glucose. Okay. Well, it sounds okay. That's a, not, not a problem, but it kind of is. And I'll tell you why. But if we reduce the amount of carbohydrate intake to about 20 grams or fewer a day, Total carbs, not net. And the, the supply of glucose is kind of not totally cut off, but reduced. And our body says, whoa, where'd the glucose go? Ah, that's okay. Let's start burning ketone bodies. Fat cells, fat. Ketone bodies. Let's burn fat for fuel. You are in a state of ketosis when you are burning fat for fuel. That's where the word ketogenic comes from. And then it got shortened and now it's just a marketing thing. But what happens? So what's the big deal? Well, when we are burning, and particularly our brains are burning glucose for its primary fuel, glucose can't be stored in the blood. 
walking around, anybody will have about five grams of glucose in their blood. That's like two, a, a teaspoon or two teaspoons of, of sugar. You have six teaspoons, you're a type two diabetic. So since it can't be stored, it is a fast burning fuel. The brain goes through it in about two hours, burns up its supply, says, ay, 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 I need some more fuel. Get me some more fuel. And so this is why you can have your so-called heart healthy breakfast of steel cut oats and rice cake and half a grapefruit and orange juice. And then in mid-morning, you are really looking for food. Your brain is telling you you're hungry. It's Your brain is looking for glucose. When you're burning fat for fuel, the brain is very happy. And we have enough onboard stores, and fat is a slow-burning fuel, if you will. We got plenty on board. Your appetite is actually suppressed. You're not hungry. It's one of the first signs that you're in ketosis is that, oh, wow, I'm I'm not really hungry. I don't feel like eating. So, yes, it is a, and so consequently you eat less because you don't need that and your brain's not calling for it. Now, we have to change our habits. Some of us eat habitually whether we're hungry or not. So we need to look at that, our behavior. But if we follow the protocol, don't eat if you're not hungry and stop eating when you've had enough you will naturally consume less. But it is not a trick. And it is not a magic thing. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's physiology. It's just, it's just the way it is. Now, there are plenty of ways to be healthy and happy and fit and trim and strong. It doesn't have to be this protocol. For me, it is the protocol. Some people really enjoy a plant-based diet. They do very well on it. Bravo. I am not that person. I'm also not the person that can say, I can eat anything, just do it in moderation. No, no. As people here have shared, the, you know, the off switch is but, uh, broken. The, you, you start eating and you want more and, and it can be habitual. Our appetite is suppressed. When you're following this and you're burning fat for fuel. Now, some of us might plow through having no appetite, no hunger, and eat anyway. Again, that's behavior. But it's, and it's, it is a fad in that not everyone's going to do it. Not everyone's going to want to stick with it. It's good. It's been very popularized in the media whenever that happens. It, it, people go overboard. They start selling things that are supposed to help you with this. You don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this. And nothing that you buy to consume will get you into ketosis. It's not what you put in your mouth. It's what you don't put in your mouth. It's not the presence of the fat or MCT oil, or me, you know, which is medium chain triglycerides. It's none of that. It's what you don't put in your mouth. The carbs. Cut off the carbs. For the most part, every food that humans consume has carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Except for lard, which has has no carbohydrate and white sugar, which has no fat. Everything in between has some of it, but so we're not zero carb. Uh, there's, there are carbohydrates in my food, eggs, bacon, hamburger, beef, liver, poultry with the skin, lamb, salmon, all that. There's carbs in it, but just not many. So, for me, this is the way to go. For other people, it's not. And it will fall out of favor. Do you remember, was it 10 years ago, paleo was the big thing? Packaging. I, I always smile in my brain when I think about the paleo age. And there was at Costco, paleo pancake mix. Because we know there are paleolithic predecessors ate pancakes on Saturday mornings, right? No. Same thing with keto brownie mix. No. So it'll go away to something else. It'll become the kelp diet. Or the next big thing will be the seaweed thing. Right now, uh, people are just swearing by medications, injectables. That's fine. Whatever works for people. But I'd rather just not eat the carbs than have to give myself an expensive shot. Because the expensive shot, you know what it does? It suppresses appetite. Guess what happens if you don't eat carbs? It suppresses your appetite. 
save the shot, save the money. But that's for me. The marketing gimmick fad may probably, hopefully, frankly, hopefully will pass because none of those products are going to help you. And they might be counterproductive. There is no such thing as keto brownie mix. Let's just be very clear here. If something's touting on the front of its label in the United States and different parts of the world, their nutrition labels don't break out total carbs. But if a product is touting either its net carbs on the label or its grams of sugar on the label or and or all the grams of protein, you can almost be assured that if you switch over, flip the nutrition label, look at it, total carbohydrates going to be out of this world compared to what they're trying to make you believe. Also look at serving size because if, you know, a serving has three total carbs, but a serving is one of one thing and it's a big box of something you might mindlessly overeat, be careful. It's not a gimmick other than marketing. It's not a trick. And there's, there's nothing, well, it can feel magical. I mean, I was, for those of you who don't know my story, I was overweight, obese, morbidly obese for 30 years, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. I had tried all this stuff. You can go to my blog, link below, and see some photographs of me in my heavier days, not even my heaviest, just heavier days, and even photographs of me during the summer of triathlons when I tried to really move more and eat less. Yeah. And so finally, I just gave up. Uh, but I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. That's another thing. You can get an injectable to keep your blood sugar low, or you can lay off the carbs. FYI, if you are taking a blood sugar medication, insulin, you must, if you're going to reduce your carbs, you must do so under doctor supervision because the combination of the insulin and the low carbs can actually drop your blood sugar too much. Now think about that for a second, and let's employ some logic. Well, if cutting out the carbs will drop my blood sugar, why am I being prescribed insulin? Okay, so anywho, well, we know why. But I just didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. And I'm probably like many people, metabolically. I'm probably the metabolic every person. Eventually... You know, eventually uh, I couldn't eat the way I was eating and, and not risk going on insulin. Or in, obviously I'd put on weight. It's, it's, not a, it's not even a new protocol. Many of you will know that, of course, there was Atkins. Uh, the the fo page four food list is based off of the induction period for the most part of the Atkins diet. Atkins didn't make it up. It can be traced back at least to 1863, where a, a English undertaker, William Banting, wrote a treatise on corpulence. He was very heavy. He couldn't even walk upstairs. He had to, he had to do it backwards. He was so heavy. So he did some research. I think it came from a French protocol. He wrote the treatise on corpulence. Guess what it pretty much is? It's pretty much page four. Some deviation. And in some parts of the world, it's called the Banting diet for that very reason. So it's not new. Thus, it can't be a fad. It's not a gimmick, unless you're thinking of marketing. Because what, what gimmick is it? I eat food when I'm hungry and I don't eat if I'm not hungry and I eat delicious food and it's very nourishing. I'm on zero medications. I'm healthy. All my, all my blood work, my heart, blood pressure, blood sugar is primo. It's not a gimmick. It's just the way my body wants to be fed. Still, there's some behavioral things I have to make sure I don't eat if I'm not hungry. Don't be like me. Yesterday I ate, yesterday afternoon I ate, I was flat out not hungry at all, and I ate anyway. Nothing outrageous, just probably cumulatively 300 calories of fatty sources of protein. But that's behavior. It's not the fault of the protocol. It's not even my fault. It's just, a, it, it is what it is. It's behavior. And we all have them. 
Okay. I am going to turn my attention to the lovely folks who have shown up here. Um, quick, uh, shameless commerce break, hat tip to the car talk guys. You don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol, but I will be happy to sell you my calendar, 2024 calendar. Um, some went out this week. Uh, there will not be any more coming in. So link below and um, I'll get them out to you. They're they're fun to put together. You can see the photographs. Casey's, Go Keto with Casey, 12-month journal. You can see the link to it uh, at my blog. It'll take you to Amazon. Some people purchase this and take it and get spiral on it because it's a little bit better to take it to Kinko's. Or um, mugs, caps, T-shirts. Oh, this T-shirt. This one is Keto and 2022. Bring it. There's a link to the 2024 version and different things, teddy bears and water. Any, And I want to thank patrons, some of whom are here. I have a private Patreon group. It's a support group where, depending on your pledge level, you will get pre-recorded video snippets from me every weekday morning at my kitchen counter with pillow hair and often without makeup. And then going up from there, a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowncast and going up from there a monthly one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. Commercial over. Thank you. Now, let's see what people have to say. And I just jump right into the middle here. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Okie dokie. Divided we fall. Good morning. Is page four something to purchase? Also, Atkins or Scarsdale equivalent on Kikito? As I said, Scarsdale, I don't know anything about that, really. I'm, I remember it, but this is the induction period of Atkins. If you have a copy of the Atkins induction period, it's pretty much it. Beth Canada, good morning from Northeastern Oklahoma. Heidi Crane, hi from Minnesota. And Debbie Friedberg, Friedenberg. Hi, Casey, thanks for being an inspiration. Well, thank you for showing up. And Colleen Sproul, verbatim from my longtime primary care physician who ignored all the other great numbers and only focused on my very elevated LDL. Quote, this will end badly. You need a statin. Well, I assume you pushed back on that, Colleen, or, you know, nodded appreciatively and said, thank you very much, but I'm not taking a statin. Inc. VR23. Good morning from PA, from Pennsylvania. Heather Silva. There are a few keto channels on YouTube that I used to watch. I stopped watching because they kept, quote, falling off the wagon. They were always making keto recipes and eating keto packaged foods. See? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. This is a practice like yoga or meditation. It's a daily practice. Think about it. To not eat if we're not hungry and stop eating when we've had enough is the opposite of what many of us have decades of habits and behavior under our belts. You should pardon the expression. How many of us were raised on the, you know, three meals a day plus two snacks, clean your plate? You know, that's just, I haven't eaten solid food yet this morning. I've had my coffee. I didn't even finish that. Oh, hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. Tumbler full of ice, diet tonic water, splash of diet cranberry. And today I splurged and put two squeezes of lime. And also, thank you. Uh, if you can, if you get something out of uh, my channel, if you subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, that really does help my channel. I appreciate it. What was else I was? Oh, the Patreon. There's a free trial, seven day free trial at at one of the levels. You can go link below, and if you like it, you can stay, and if you don't, you won't. But it's there. Holly L writes, "Merry Christmas," and Kathleen Hughes, a member of the Bravocados Club on the YouTube channel, same thing happened to me. Colleen, I did not allow the negative comments to take away my joy of victory. Good for you. Inc. VR23, anyone ever had super elevated liver numbers when not eating keto and brought them down by eating keto? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, contrary to what a very popular YouTube personality preaches, the ketogenic protocol does not cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It actually cures it. 
Now, why would someone say the opposite? Because then that person wants to sell you some liver pills. Lay off the carbs, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Thank you for asking that question. Colleen Sproul, I did so. I Casey, meaning, you know, thank you very much. I'm not taking a statin. Debbie Frieden, Friedenberg, how long were you following before your hubby joined in? I wish my husband would commit to this. About six months. My lovely mate never had a weight issue, never had issues, bad relationship with food. He loved food. He could eat all he wanted. And he did. He ate a lot of food. Remained trim, strong. He had put on a little bit of weight after age 50, but nothing dramatic. He still looked like the trimmest man in the room wherever we went. He was the trimmest man in the room. But he was hearing the lectures I was listening. I didn't follow YouTube channels that, you know, were trying to sell anything. or They didn't exist for the most part. This is 10 years ago. But lectures from medical people, actual legitimate medical people. Um, Eric Westman, who is now a friend of mine. I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman, who is now a friend. I'm proud to say I was never his patient, but I saw him and this led to Stephen Finney and Jeff Bolick and the art and science of low carbohydrate living and the low, the art and science of low carbohydrate performance. My husband was hearing these lectures. He's an enthusiastic cyclist. And when he was hearing that lots of things can improve from, depending on you, some people's eyesight improve, but athletic performance can improve because when you're not burning sugar for fuel, you don't have to be downing Snickers bars and full sugar Coca-Cola's while you're on your bicycle every hour or so. You just burn fat. And Chris Froome, who won the Tour de France six times, I think, is on keto. Okay, so anyway, so he said, uh, uh, he just said, you know, and I was still making homemade wheat bread, honey wheat bread. I ground the wheat berries, pretty much an earth mother, ground the wheat berries, made the bread. I made it every Sunday. And one day he says, don't, uh, this was great. Don't make any more bread. What? Yeah, don't make any more bread. Oh, you don't like it? No, I really like it. And And don't buy any more rice or beans or tortilla chips. What? He said, I want to, I want to do what you do. Now he ate through all that stuff, <laughs> but he started it. And of course, between, oh, let me see, 8, 15 PM and 7 45 AM the next morning, he lost all the weight and got to his, his ideal weight. He's a dude, but I love him for it anyway. So about six months to answer, that was a long answer to a very quick question. Debbie Friedenberg. I hear you, Betty. My husband is a carb junkie. Betty Bauman, my husband is a cyclist too, but could stand to lose some weight. So I'm going to let something happen in, because I don't know what happens. I'm getting a little notice that something's going to start in 40 seconds. So I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to let this be. I am going to start, you know what? No, I'm not. I don't want to do that. There was something was going to pop up and I, I didn't need that. So, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. And, you know, cyclists move more as a rule, but they don't always eat less. I highly recommend the art and science of low carbohydrate performance. If your husband would be interested in why cutting back on the carbs can be so beneficial. Judy Porterfield, my husband's been on board, but for some reason, I do so good when he's on a work trip, <laughs> LOL. Not that I cheat when he's home, just eat more. Doing good through the holidays so far, yay. And Judy, that is sardines, man, because I think I recall that last holiday season, there was, ooh, I'll just have one slice of this. And then fast forward. To how long was it? Into January, February, something? I th I seem to recall this, Judy. Judy's a, not only a, a member of the club, but she's a patron. And uh, we have patron-only live streams and on Crowdcast. And her autocorrect, when she was typing awesome for somebody's accomplishment, came out as sardines. So it's now a battle cry. Sardines! Yes, Casey. 
last year taught me a lot. You know, and that is the thing. I just don't play. You know why? Because one thing, I don't need a slice of anything. I know there's no nutrition in that apple cobbler. There's no nutrition in it. So if we, if we could change our thinking to eat because we're supposed to be nourishing our bodies, there's no nutrition in pretzels, even less in chocolate covered pretzels. But then it starts to be this, I'm going to have to fight with my brain because I'm going to want more. And I'm tired of fighting with my brain about food. And that's just the way it is. So I, I apologize if anyone has shared this, but have you, how do you think a lot of people characterize the ketogenic protocol? Other, you know, Colleen's doctor saying this is not going to end well. What a thing. Just because of LDL? Okay. Metabolic syndrome. Those, many of you are aware of this. There is something called metabolic syndrome. It used to be called syndrome X. There are five situations, five markers, and you are assumed to be at very much greater risk for cardiovascular disease if you have three out of the five. Some people have none. Some people have all five. Some people have four. Let's talk about this. If you have three out of these five, you are assumed to be at greater risk for cardiovascular disease. Large waist circumference, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high triglyceride, low HDL. What's not in there at all? Triglyceride and HDL are, but not LDL of either size. There's big fluffies, there's small tinies. I have high LDL. It's because I've got about a billion of the big fluffy ones and almost none of the small stickies. Say it again. Large waist circumference, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high triglyceride, low HDL. So you can not have a large waist circumference. You can be thin and have these other four. Some of us probably know people who are thin but have high blood pressure and high blood sugar and high triglyceride and low HDL. Some people can have a large waist circumference and none of the others. Those two ends of the spectrum are rarer. But listen to this. Laying off the carbs addresses blood sugar, and if you stick with it, will lower triglyceride and raise HDL. When triglyceride goes down, HDL goes up. It's like a teeter-totter. And ideally, you want a ratio of one-to-one. One. Whatever your triglyceride number is, you'd like it to be the same as the HDL. If the HDL is higher, even better. If the triglyceride is a little bit, you know, you can have like a one-and-a-half, two-to-one ratio, and you're still okay. Some people have like a five-to-one ratio. No es bueno. You don't want to be top heavy in triglyceride. But LDL does not come into this. So good for you who educate yourself and are con taking charge of your health care and not deciding to take a statin, which has its statins have side effects. And it's a medication. So um, I'm trying to see. Okay, Judy Porterfield writes, it's easy to think just one will work. Sometimes it doesn't, especially this time of year. Colleen's broke crazy. Colleen's broke lots of eye rolling if I answer any questions. Mm, oh, well. Hope his eyes don't get stuck like that. Doc Shungal, most people I know don't care. I've had success. They don't want to give up the food they love. There you go. Debbie Friedenberg, we walked into C's Candy last night because hubby had to have some. That was very challenging for sure. But it sounds like I'm, a, I'm, I'm sensing that you resisted the challenge or you, you stood up to the challenge. And Debbie Friedenberg writes, and yet if I say I'm on the keto protocol, I get head shakes like I am the crazy one. Yeah. You know, I never talk about it. I mean, all I do is talk about it, but I never talk about it to people in my, you know, IRL, um, unless they ask me, and nobody does. Annie Lewis, I think people can find any new viewpoint they want online. So support or to debunk. I have to see what works for me and go with it. That's the, you know, that's a beautiful way to wrap this up. 
you can find pros and cons for absolutely anything online. Someone will agree with you and someone will disagree with you. Ultimately, nobody gets a vote on what we eat. We find what works for us. And then we have the practice of continuing on with that. And that's where the challenge comes. Doing what we know works. Heidi Crane, why are statins not good? Well, there's a whole long thing about that, but they have side effects, not minor ones. Plus, they're a medication that you don't need. They're also not very effective. They can be effective for men, men, not women, who have already had a cardiac event. And what it can be effective for is delaying the next cardiac event for maybe five years. But ineffective. If you haven't had a cardiac event, there's nothing to treat. As Dr. Westman says, cholesterol is not a disease. All right. We are going to call it today. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. Thank you for the support. Those of you who buy a mug or are part of the support group, I really appreciate it. It's an honor. It's a lot of fun. And let's, we've got a couple of more of these live streams before 2024. So let's get through the holiday season and let's look at the new year having come through and feeling stronger. Thanks a lot, guys. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer, total not net, and be sweet. Just don't eat sweets. Ciao.